Good afternoon, class. Thank God for being here again. I hope you are all doing well. We want to continue with a lesson on pediatric nursing. Now we are looking at growth and development of the child. And we've seen what growth is, development, maturation, and then learning. We also look at the stages of growth and development, and then factors that affect growth and development. We also look at the stages, the various stages where we have the neonate stage, the infancy, the prenatal, and then the rest. So we also look at how you assess growth and development of the baby. And then we learn that with the assessment, we can use these domains, the physical domain, the psychosocial, and then the cognitive. So we are going to look at how we use these domains in assessing the growth and development of a child. So our first stage that we are going to look at is the neonatal period. And then the neonatal period starts from age eight, uh, one day or day of birth to 28 days. And if you could look, this is what we did in PDS1. So everything about the neonates is in PDS1. So this one is just, you have to go back and then refer to your what? notes. Good. Let's continue. So as we said earlier on, neonates start from day of birth to 28 days or the first month of the child's life. And then you could see that in, in your previous notes, we used the APGA score in assessing the new needs. And I believe you all know the APGA score, where the aim is appearance, then the pulse, the grimace, activity, and then the respiration. And then we also have various means of scoring the new needs using this APGA score, where each and every one represents two, zero to two. So if the child comes out, the first minute you assess the child, and then the fifth minute you assess the child, and then the child should range between seven and 10. And as I told you in PDS1, nobody can score 10 over 10. And when the score is below four, it means the child needs what? Critical care. So we continue. What we have to look here is the, how we nurse this neonate. We learned how to take the weight, the length, the air circumference, the fontanelles, how to assess the fontanelles, the diamond shape, and then the triangular shape, where we have the anterior fontanel and then the posterior fontanel. And then the duration that they closes, we've done all this one. When there's any problem with the, with the fontanel, you see it bulging or sunken, which means that there's over fluid in it or there is dehydration. We've done all these things in PDS1. How to assess the neck. We said that for the neck it's not strong enough. So the, how you lift the baby can affect the neck. So when you are holding the baby, you have to lift the baby carefully that the baby will not injure the neck. Then the chest too, we are saying that it's round. And then the extremities where we have the acinosis, where we have bluish extremities, and then the entire body pink. And that is the reason why you cannot score a baby 10 over 10. The reflexes, we also look at the rooting reflex, the circling reflex, which are very, very important in the day, first day of life of the baby, because this is what the baby is going to use to feed the Babinski, and then the rest, they are all there. So straight away, let's move on to how we care for, for the baby, the nursing management. When they come to the hospital, what actually do we do for them in terms of sickness? We are saying that with the newborn, they are what? They use the circling reflexes. So all forms of administration of tablet or drugs are administered through what? The oral route. And then if the child is in a critical stage, we use the what? The intravenous line. 
Then nutrition. The only food that they can take is the breast milk. And most of the time, the breast milk does not come enough until the third day. So we need to feed the baby on demand. We don't schedule the baby. We give them breast milk exclusively. And then it continues like that. So the breast milk is well established on the third day. Then safety measures. We are saying that with their safety measures, is, it's like how we position them in bed. You know, after feeding, you have to see to it that the baby bears down so that the baby will not bring out milk that he will regurgitate and then choke the baby and then cause asphyxia in the baby or even death. And then also when we are placing them down or putting them down on the bed, you make sure that you put them on the side and then it is protect the baby by putting them on their hand so that they will not fall between the cots. Some of them use cots. Others too, they do their bed on the, the bed that they normally sleep on. But if it's a cot and then the mattress in the cot is not fitting into the cot itself, you need to put some cloth beside it so that the baby will not move to that side. That will bring about cyanosis or uh, ischemia in the baby. And then make sure that the baby is on the side. And then also you make sure that all drainage comes out other than that the baby may choke. Then also, you can position the baby on the abdomen, but we prefer the side to side than the abdomen. And then you also have to watch out for regurgitation so that it will prevent any aspiration, as I said earlier on. And then make sure that you carry the baby by protecting him against injury by holding the head in a firm position so that the baby may not injure the neck. Now, let's look at the assessment of the uh, infants. Infants extend from one month to one year. Growth, we are saying that is rapid, especially during the first six months of life. Weights attain twice their birth weight by age of five to six months, and by three, by age one, it triples the birth weight. So this one you can be asked in your multiple choice question. At which age the baby may attain double the weight at birth? You should know. You should know. And by age one year, the child gains what? Three times the birth weight. Now let's look at height. We have to do some a little bit calculation here. Normally, the infant increases by 2.5 centimeters per month during the first six months of life. Then, after the six months, the child increases half that rate, that is 2.5 centimeters. And then, during the next six months. So, if the child weight is at, um, the height of the child is at, let's say, 52 centimeters. By age six months, you should know the height of the baby. And then by age one year, you should be able to know the height of the baby. So we are saying that by age one year, the infant height will have increased by 50% over its birth height. And you should take note of it. This one too, I, I normally give questions and then you calculate the height of the baby by age one year. Her circumference normally increases by half an inch or 1.3 centimeters per month during the sex, uh, first six months. Then one and half rates during the next six months. So all these things comes with calculation because when you give birth to the child, the hair circumference, the head is bigger than any other parts of the body. But as the baby grows, the head becomes what? Smaller. So the, the, the weight or the, the head circumference decreases as the child age on. By age one year, 
her circumference would have increased by one, one third over the circumference at birth. With the length or weight and then the height, it increases, but the hair circumference decreases. Now the chest, looking at the infant chest, during this time, the circumference of the chest begins to take more of an adult shape. So you could see that now the child is maturing. The chest circumference now equals the what the head circumference. Visual acuity. You see that from the beginning, at birth, the child cannot see well. But by the age, as the child grows, the, the sight also increases gradually. The baby is able to focus by age three months. Accommodation of objects or near objects is attained at age five months. And then fixation on small objects is by 10 months. And that is why normally you see this baby, they are able to follow ants when they are sitting on the floor. So you see them focusing on this, fixing on this small, small object, and then they try to follow this small object and then use that one to crawl. Hearing. This begins is normally present or before birth and can be assessed by what? Infant's response to loud noise. That is the subtle reflex. So we are normally say that after hearing right from utero, the fetus can hear and it continues at birth. By age four months, an infant can locate sound and then quickly the child may turn to the direction of the sound. By 10 months, he responds to some small speaking or calling of his name. So if you mention Kofi, then the baby will turn to you. Nana, the baby will turn to you. So by age 10 months, they respond to someone calls or speaking or calling their names. Dating. The first date appear at the lower gum, about two of them, in the sixth, fifth to sixth month. So by six months, you should see the first two teeth appearing at the lower gum. After these first two teeth appear at the lower gum, the upper central incisors erupt in the next month. So for instance, if by the age of six months, the first teeth, uh, two pair of teeth appear at the lower gum. Within a month or the seventh month, you should see the upper central incisors also coming up. Now let's look at the motor development of the infant. With the motor development, it's marked by what? Gradual increase in strength. You know from birth, they don't have any strength. But one month, two months, they increase in what? Strength. And the motor development starts from there. During this stage, voluntary purposeful what? movement replaces the old reflexes. You know, they, have, they, don't, they can't talk, they can't do anything, so they use their reflexes. But as they age, these reflexes are now turned into what? Meaningful ones. The infant can now hold the head and then turn side to side when in the prone position. So by the time you come, the position you put the baby, the baby may change that position. By age four months, baby can now lift or raise the head and then the anterior part of the shoulder, especially when you put them in the prone position. By the time you come, the child has raised the chest and then is sitting down looking at you. By a six months, the baby can turn himself at will. So you put the baby down. By the time you come, baby has turned to the other side. And as the child is able to control the head, sitting also follows. As I explained yesterday, the principle, orderly and sequential. So baby is now able to support the head on the neck. Baby is now able to sit and then followed by what? Walking. 
So by age six months, the child can sit with support. Seven months, the child can sit alone and then start crawling. By age 10 months, the infant can move from prone to sitting position. By age six to seven months, the infant can bear its weight when in what? Standing position. And that is where you see them moving around a table or a chair. By age nine months, the infant can get up and then stand alone while holding on to something. By one year, the infant can walk when he or she is being held by the hand. But this depends on what the individual. Yesterday we said it, they are unique. Our previous lesson, we said that they are unique. That is one of the principles. So you don't say that, oh, Kofi is one year and then he is working. Why is it that Nana is one year and then he is not working? You can't say that because they are unique. Sleeping pattern of the infant. You know, we said that in PD1, we said that the, the neonates can sleep between 18 to 22 hours a day. With the infant, nocturnal sleep pattern now develops by the age of three months. So in the night, the baby will sleep and sleep well. By age six months, the infant sleeps throughout the night and sleep in the daytime depending on the needs. Depending on the needs, let me explain this one for you very well. We are saying that depending on the needs. For instance, you fed the baby. Now baby is crying. You've done everything. You don't know what's wrong with the baby. The baby will never sleep. But you fed the baby, you change the baby. Maybe baby is a little bit warm or sweating. Quickly, you need to tap his sponge a little so that the baby will look fresh and then ensure good ventilation and the baby will sleep. But if you don't meet all these needs of the baby, the baby will not have the normal sleep that the baby is supposed to attain at that age. So that is that. We need to work on this one. Because if you, if you see some mother saying that and the baby is not sleeping, the baby is not doing, it depends on the needs of the baby. If you are not able to fulfill the needs of the baby, the baby finds it difficult to sleep. By age 8 to 9 months, the infant needs only 1 to 2 nap during the day. Because of the activity, they try to play, jump here and there. They learn new activities, new skills, and they want to practice it all the time. So they find it difficult to sleep during the day. So they only have 1 to 2 nap during the day. The sleep, the sleep pattern is well established by the way the infant is being fed. As I said earlier on, if you are able to feed the baby well, the baby will sleep for you. Because when you need food, you can never sleep. Even you adults, when you, are, you need the, the food and then the food that you, you take in the evening is not well enough, you find it difficult in sleeping. The same thing applies to the babies. So you need to feed them well and then they will be able to sleep. The nurse has to also help the caregiver about what? The sleep-wake pattern, some of them, they have to sleep and then wake up and then feed. You need to inculcate all these things in the plan of care of the infant so that you will not, the baby will not have what? Uninterrupted sleep. Now let's look at the elimination pattern. With the neonates, we talk about the meconium. And you know what meconium is. That is the first two that is being passed by the baby. And this continues to the third day where the breast milk is well established. And as the breast milk is well established, all the meconium will be getting off from the baby. Now from the meconium, we move on to the milky part where you have this flaky yellowish stool coming out. Two of the breastfed infants are pasty and that of the formula fed are firmer in consistency. We are done with the physical aspect. Now let's look at the psychosocial. That is the developing trust. That is the stage of the Erickson 
theory. Now the child has to develop that trust. How does the child develop that trust? It's how the parents or the immediate caregivers render to the child. If you are able to take good care of the needs of the baby, the baby now identifies that every part of the body or the society is, is in its or a support. So the baby is free, the baby is able to do everything, and then the baby develops that trust. So all the time, baby cries, and then baby knows that, oh yes, my mommy is there for me, daddy is there for me, the siblings are there. So that trust is there. Then, when the baby doesn't get all these things, that is where you see the baby all the time emotionally disturbed. And then the baby, I always say that some of these babies or some of these are robbers and then the vagabonds we see around start from this stage. Because some of them, they don't have that tender loving care. No breast milk. No exclusive what? Breast milk. So they don't have patience for anybody. You see that man robber come to you, just snout your view with the gun, and they run away. All because the, the person didn't take what? The mother's breast milk. So by age six to eight months, the infant can now determine strange faces. And that is why some of them, the moment you, you lift them, they start crying. But when they see their mother, you see them running to the mother, laughing and then smiling and then looking at their family members. But if they don't know you, then they start crying. If you want to pick them from their mother, then they turn themselves as if they don't want you to take them. So you don't have to force them. When you say it like that, you don't have to force them. But some of us, we do force them. And then you see these babies crying. But if you want to pick them, as a stranger, you want to pick them, just have a close eye contact. And then you see the baby will now be looking at you, and then we'll see that mm, this one is a good person. My parents are talking to him or her, and then I can also go to him. Then you stretch your hands, and then the baby will come to you. Play, we are saying that play is also another important aspect of the development of the child. You need to what? Play with the infant and not to what? Allow the infant to play alone. At that stage, they don't know what is good for them. So you have to know the, the developmental milestone of the child and then also you, you help the child to attain that developmental what? Play because it helps the child to move on in the development. Then intervention that will urge you bring out help to achieve what? The developmental milestone. How you help the child brings out the developmental milestone of the baby. We are now on the cognitive aspect. And then the cognitive aspect we are using the PIJ developmental stage where we have the sensory motor phase. The infant is in the sensory motor phase. Most of the time they are able to what? Differentiate themselves from what? Objects. The infant learns that stimulus to, uh, initiates a chain of what? Events. He begins to what? See voluntary actions instead of what? Reflexive action like the startling and then gaggly becomes what? Deliberate. So the child can decide to go. You see them walking around, uh, then they'll go back to the breast milk because now they, are, they know where to go for the breast milk and then where not to go for the breast milk. By age four to eight months, the infant action usually are uh, what? Repeated and more prolonged. As we learned in the principle, where they learn new skills, they try to practice more of the new skills. So these ones is where the child learns something and then continue to do it for a very long time. And this helps in what? In developing the, the mental faculty of the child. They also tend to what? Be banging. You see them. When they open the door and then the sound of the door, they continue to open it here and there. 
shaking things, pulling and then what? Jumping, imitating people. You see them, somebody laughing, they look at you and then they also start laughing. All these things are part of what? The cognitive aspect. They also what? Desire in learning new skill. I've talked about it, especially in playing. The what you do is what they will also do. By age eight months to one year, the child or the infant uses his ability of what? Stepping stone to learn new skills. So when they start working, especially as they see somebody working and then they are able to move one, two, three, they continue working and then they will never sit. You see them picking things here and there. They will never rest. We are saying that in the cognitive time, too, the infant developed the ability to form cognitive what? Representations of what? The world. Represent objects what? From real world or in its mind. So some of them, they are able to keep things. They are playing with something and then you come and pick it and then hide it. They'll be looking for it. When they don't see it, they just take their mind off it because they know that the thing or the object what exists. So for example, by age six to nine months of age, the child begins to what understand that object exists even when they are what out of what sight. And that is why also the mothers leave and then they don't look for the mother. But they know that their mothers are there, especially those of us that leave our children to work. When we are leaving, then they will be crying, and then some of them they will tell you that oh, the house up or the nanny should take the child inside. By the time the child will come out, you've gone, and you see them crying. But they will cry for some time, and they stop because they know that my mother exists, and that is what object permanence. After age, nine months of age, the infant look, will look for what? Or move an object blocking its way. Especially when they are playing with toys and then you take it away. They try to look for it. But as they don't get it, they just close their mind and they move on with their life. And then at this stage, we are saying that you have to encourage the caretakers to praise them, especially when they are able to achieve certain things, especially with their new skills, they are able to say certain things, you need to appraise them so that you, they keep it up. And then you also have to maintain safe environment for them, especially when they start working. You don't have to put things in their way that will let them fall to bring about what? Injury. And then when you find them in the hospitals too, you have to provide them with side rules. Other than that, by the time you come out, they are on the floor, and then you have to write reports upon reports. So you need to provide them with what side rules when you are nursing them on the ward. Now with the cognitive tool, we have language there. With the language, you know that from PDS1, we learned that crying is the first language that they know. So they use crying to communicate to you as to what they need. By age five to six weeks, the infant is capable of making small, throaty sounds. You see them uh, playing. <coughs> you don't know what exactly they are saying, but that is the sound that they can make. When then with time, you see that all this sound that they are making in their throat become a what? A meaningful sound. By age four months, they are able to laugh here and there. You smile with them, they smile at you. You laugh, they also laugh. By age nine to ten months, they usually what, understand simple word like no. And that is why they develop these two letter words, da, ma, and then with time, the four letter words also join. And then they become meaningful and then they are able to say mama, dada. You could see that by age one to two years, the child can never tell the name of the parents. All that they know is mama, dada. And all this comes under what? The cognitive domain. Now let's look at the nursing consideration. When they come to the hospital or when we are nursing them, what are some of the things that we have to put in mind when we are taking care of these infants? 
They are saying that due to their development of their motor abilities, they resist medication. Therefore, they need to restrain them by holding them firmly in a comfortable manner. But some of us, those of us in the in the room, you see us forcing the children and then we hold them. Some of us we even hold their nose. We hold their nose and before we pour the medication in, please, we are begging. They will aspirate. And you get pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia will set in. And these babies can die out of what? This pneumonia. So we are saying that although the ability is there, even if you are not careful, they will just splash the medication on you. But we are saying that you strain them, but you strain them in what? In a comfortable manner. You also have to what? Bear in mind that the infants are capable of what? Remembering negative experiences. And that is why I don't like mothers telling that Auntie Nancy Bo, or Bawa Upanye. No. The moment the child registers that in the mind, any time he or she sees any nurse, the child will start crying. So we need to avoid that. We shouldn't use administration of medication or ingestion as a means of what? Deterring them from anything. So we need to comfort them in any aspects of our nursing because of these negative experiences. During this stage too, they, are also, they also learn to drink from cup, as I explained in our previous lesson. They are able to coordinate their mouth and then the spoon or the cup. But you have to guide them. Other than that, by the time it gets to the mouth, everything is on the floor. Nutrition. First six months, breast milk is the only means of what? Nutrition for the child. Some of us, due to one reason or the other, we tend to what? Commercial prepared food. But we are now advocating for what? Exclusive breastfeeding. So we need to watch out. First six months, breast milk is the only food for the baby. And when we are able to do this exclusive breastfeeding, it really helped the child. The child developed mentally, socially, emotionally, psychologically, and the child looks strong and healthy. So we need to encourage the mothers to continue with what or practice this exclusive breastfeeding for good development of the child. Solid food should be what introduced into the child by the age of what five to six months. We'll be looking at winning very soon. The loss of frustration, that is usually by the age of what, four to five months, indicates what is readiness for what, solid food. So by age four months, you see this child, now everything the child takes is in the mouth. The food you eat, you, the child will also be looking at you. When we come to weaning, we will be looking at all these things, the signs that will let you know that the child is ready for weaning. And then we are also saying that when you are introducing these cereals or food, we prefer what? The commercially prepared cereals, such as the, the cerealac, the maize, the rice, and then you mix them. But we have to also make sure that these cereals we are giving to them is easily digestible. I always say that they should be what similar to that of the breast milk initially, so the child is able to what adapt to it before we increase the solidity of the feed. And when we are also feeding them, we should see to it that they are not allergic. That is why you have to feed them during the daytime, so that if there is any allergic reaction, quickly you can interact and then intervene. And then we also have to remember that when we are feeding them with cap, it should be cap and spoon. We shouldn't use feeding bottles. We should feed them with cap and spoons. From age seven months to one year, the infant still depends on what? The breast milk. So we feed them along, aside with the breast milk. As we are feeding them the solid food, we should continue to feed them with the breast milk. So they are two years old before we wean them off the breast milk. 
But some of them, the moment the child starts taking the food at six months, then we stop the breast milk. We need to wean them and wean them very well. So we feed them alongside the breast milk. So as we introduce the feed, we should also give them fruits and then water. We should give them fruits and water, very necessary. So we are saying that these are feeding etiquettes that we need to teach our babies. When they are feeding, we should give them a table and chair, spoon and plates, and then they feed from it. They should be in a sitting up position during feeding. By age nine to one year, the infants will be what? Drinking from small amounts of liquid from a cup, as we said earlier on. You encourage them, you teach them, you support them, especially when they are using the cup and then uh, in drinking their water. Then you also encourage self what? Feeding. You need to help them to learn how to feed themselves. Some of them, we, we normally put our babies on the floor. And by the time we realize, they pour the food on the floor and they start eating from the floor. We are saying that even when you are doing that, you put the spoon in the bowl for the uh, child to use it in feeding. And then we have to remember to use the word. Sense of independence is helping in developing the child. So you have to use, remember the infant sense of independence is at stake, is developing now. So when you are beginning something or teaching them something, you have to do it with care, especially when it comes to the feeding with the spoon. You need to teach them so that they gain that independence in feeding. Safety consideration, the infants. These things, they tend to roll from one place to the other, especially when they are in prone position. So if they come to the hospital and then we are taking care of them and then there is no side rail, most of them normally come out of their cot and then fall down. And some of them get severe injury. Some of them even get fractures, which becomes complicated. So please, when we are nursing them, we should make sure that we provide them with what? Side rules. And we are also saying that you don't have to prop them up when they are, you are feeding them with bottles. It's not even necessary to use the feeding bottle. They should be in a sitting up position. After feeding them, too, we have to put them on the back or on the side to prevent what? Regurgitation in the child. Also avoid feeding the child with what? Nuts and corn. Some of them may swallow it, especially with a tablet. When on the ward, we don't place our tablet or the drugs of the infant at a safe place. By the time you come, they've opened it and they've taken it and they may swallow. And as they are swallowing it, it may not go into the giant, but will go into the airway and also cause obstruction in the baby. We need to avoid not, as I said earlier on, inspect all toys, especially when they are in the playroom. Every toy you, need, you give to them, you need to inspect it, know the parts, so that after the playtime, and then there is any loose part of the toy, you have to look for it. Because some of them may put it in their mouth and then may swallow it. Our sharp bosses too are very important. We should keep them out of reach of the what? Children. And then our syringes, knife in the homes and then the rest. We should make sure that they are in safe place. We have to keep all harmful objects away from the infant. Especially most of us put these parazones, kerosene in drinking bottles. And these infants may think that, oh, it's the normal water bottle. So they pick it and then drink it. I quite remember I told you that one of my colleagues puts kerosene in this vortic bottle. And then I don't know how come that the, uh, the kerosene in the vortic bottle got into the fridge. 
and a three-year-old child pick it and drank it. This is serious. You may ask yourself, how did the kerosene in the vortex bottle got into the fridge? So these are some of the things. Some of them, they don't even smell it well, and then they start drinking because they are thirsty. And this child, Christmas season, 25th, they spent all the Christmas season in the hospital. It's so sad. So please, these children, they are very, very, very alert in certain things. So please, let's keep them well, especially the infants and then the toddlers. They are very difficult to handle, so we should handle them with care. And we are saying that you don't have to leave them alone with water. By the time you come, they put their face and then see, because they are seeing their face in the water, they try to put the face in the water. By the time you come, they are drunk. Some of them, they play along the bath and then they open the tap and then they get into it. All these things are dangerous at, and then we need to what? ensure safety in their homes. And then when they are also working, we are saying that you have to remove any objects that will obstruct their movement. I believe you don't have much question. Let's continue to the toddler. With the toddler, we are saying start from three, one to three years. So by a three years, you see the child well formed. Growth period, we are saying that slows down. But however, the strength and then the motor skills what increases because of good nutrition that the child is receiving. Then the weight also increases approximately 2.3 kg per year. By 30 months, the toddler normally weighs four times his or her birth weight. Most body systems too are now reaching their well physical logic maturation. That is, all the systems are now well matured to take the adult form. Height, we are also saying that 7.6 centimeters per year. The growth occurs in what? On even spots or range rather than what? Uniformly and then consistency. So here we are saying that, you know, from infancy, we can see some systematic and the uniform way of what? The weight and then the height. But when they get to this stage, you see that it's not consistent and they're not what? Uniform. We say, normally say that the male child normally have, the height is more than that of the girl child. So by age two years, the height of the child at age two years is what can determine the adult height of the child. So if you know the child height at age two years, you can determine the adult height by what? Just doubling the height. Then with the females, the child's adult height can be estimated by doubling the height at what? Age 18 months. So all that you need to know is for a boy, you know the height at what? Age two years. And then with the girl, the height at age 18 months. Her circumference, we are saying that increases 2.5 centimeters between the ages of one to two years. And then it's equal to the chest circumference. You know, with the infant, uh, the neonates, we are saying that the head is bigger than the chest circumference. But when it gets to the toddler, the chest and then the head circumference is now equalized. So by a three years, the chest circumference is greater than the head circumference. And then the head circumference is slightly smaller than the chest second friends. Skin. Right from the beginning, that is the neonate say the infant skin is very delicate. So if you use any harsh chemicals on the body, 
you see that you see some bruises on the skin. So we normally say that we should use what? Soft soap in bathing for the baby. I'm second friends. It's taken to what? Indirectly measuring the muzzle mass. So when we are using the ham circumference, we are looking at the muzzle mass of the baby. And this is what normally we use to assess what? The children with malnutrition or the SAM. You all know the SAM, severe acute malnutrition. This is what we normally use to assess them. Those who are wasting and then those who are what? Edema, toss, or any, like the kwashioko, and then the marasmus. These are the means that we use to assess them. So we use that one also to evaluate the nutritional status. So if they are not getting good nutrition, you see them wasting in the muzzle mass. So we will learn how to take the arm circumference. And then with this, I think you've done it in nutrition. You've done it in nutrition when you were treating acute malnutrition with the sun. So this one too, I'll not bother myself in going to go back to your nose and then you read more on it. Then the bone age is also similar to that of the arm circumference that we are talking of. Just looking at some of the, how they are being exposed to radiations and then the rest. The motor development, they are saying that the toddler period is also another stage where you have activity, a lot of activity, and then they like to explore. So you see them jumping here and there, looking for things, whatever they see, they try to probe into it what actually it is. So they, they move a lot, and then they spend energy a lot. So the child develops greater purposeful mobility such as running, jumping, clamping, here and there. Very, very necessary. The least thing, they can never sit at one place. The moment they get up, you see them jumping on the bed, running after people, and then climbing here and there. So you need to monitor them, especially the boys. You need to monitor them. They will tell you they are playing ball. By the time you realize they are on the floor. So please, we need to take good care of them. And then during this time, too, we advise the caregivers, as I'm saying, they should restrict some of the cloth, the dresses that they wear. We should put them on things that can fit them and then that will enable them to embark on their work, their activities to ensure safety. Now let's talk about the body temperature of the child. At the toddler stage, they are now able to what? Attain normal regulation of the skin. They can now control their body temperature, unlike the neonates and then the infant. You know in Pediswan, we are saying that the moment they are moving from one environment to the other, and then the environment that they are coming out from is very warm. So the moment they are being given birth to, we need to wrap them to maintain that warm until they adapt to the external environment. But with the toddlers, now they are okay, they've adapted, and they are able to adjust to the what? external environment. So now they can control temperature. They can tell you that, yes, mommy, I'm feeling cold. Mommy, I'm feeling warm. But the infant and then the neonate can never do that. Their sleeping pattern. As they are growing, their sleeping pattern is also changing. And we know that there is what a wider variety of differences in their sleep pattern with the toddlers. By age one to two years, they take two naps during the day, whereas age three, they take only one nap per day. So you see, because of the activities and they are, because some of them by age three, they are in nursery. So the school activities keep them awake and then they spend only what? One nap. Usually the toddlers sleep between what nine to twelve hours. We said with the with the neonates they sleep eighteen to twelve hours, 20, uh, twenty-two hours, and then the toddler 
9 to 12 hours. And this is the stage they also have nightmares. Some of them is as a result of their daily activities that they embark on. So you see them in the night sleeping, and then they'll be talking to themselves. And some of them too will be shouting, or bo, or bo, as if there's something in the room coming to attack them. So some of them too, I don't know if they, they hold their nose, oh, oh, as if some of them will be crying. Crying in their dreams. As if somebody has beaten them. All these are nightmares. And then when they come to the hospital, then we tend to give them names. This child is a witch. They are not witches. That is the stage they are in. They normally have nightmares. And it's common among them. So when they come to the world and they are behaving in that stage, we shouldn't term them or classify them as witches. And so when we are caring for them, we should know how to do it. And then plan their care well to avoid interruption in their sleep. We need to provide quiet and then comfortable environment, especially when they are having the nightmare. We need to reassure them, hold them, and then put them to sleep again. If possible, sing for them to put them to sleep again. Some of them may prefer light because if the lights are off and then they see something hanging, then the thing is coming. So we need to assess them, know what they want. When we come to admissions, we will talk about this thing, admission of a child to an hospital. We'll talk about this thing. You need to find out from the mother the sleeping pattern of the child and then what are the rituals that are being done for the child when the child is about to sleep. And we need to embark on all these things before we can get them to be good children. Other than that, all the time we give them names, which they are not. So please, let's take good care of these toddlers when we are nursing them. Elimination. Toddlers are at an age of what? Toilet readiness. That is by a three years. By three to four years, you should be able to train your child the potty. So that when the child is or the child wants to poo poo, the child should be able to go to the uh, bathroom and then use the pot or take a, a potty and then he's himself in it. Other than that, the child will keep on messing himself in public. So we are saying that by age three years, the child is what ready for toilet training. And this is achieved by what? Controlling of the strength. And you know we have the, one of the principles where we have the, the interrelated, where all the organs in the body come together to perform a function. And this elimination pattern is one of them. The sense that you sense that I have the urge to ease myself. And then the moral aspect, you don't want anybody to see you. And then the cognitive aspect, can also comes in here so that the child will be able to control the system. The child should be able to know that, oh, where I am, I'm not able to poo poo there. I have to go inside and then poo poo. All these things count. And then there should be what? Bowel control and then daytime what? Bladder control. So some of them, you see them, when they want to wee wee, they will never wee wee or they will come and stand in front of you and then hold themselves and then you see them shaking themselves then you know that this is the sign that the child is telling you that I want to wee wee. If they want to poo poo, you see them holding their bottles and then they will be shaking themselves. It's a sign to let you know that the child wants to what? poo poo. And then at this stage too, that is where the increases and the capacity of their kidneys also increases. And they have what? Better concentration of urine. So some of them, when they pass urine in bed, you see how it smells because they are taking in good food and then the urine is well what, concentrated. So please, when they come to the hospital, we need to find out from the mothers their rituals and then we do that for them. Because the way the mother has trained the child, if they come to the hospital facility and then they are not getting it, they will be all the time crying and we need to avoid this crying. So we need to find out from the parent 
how they go about their training for their child and then we also embark on that. So find out from the mother, how does your child behave when the child wants to poo, -poo or the child wants to wee, wee Even some of them, when they are in the pampas, they will never poo, poo They will never wee, wee until you remove the pampas for them. We need to find out all these things from the mother or the father. So you also find out how they call them in the house, the routines that they do for the child. We need to find out all these things so that it will help you plan the child care. And then some of them too, because they are not well trained, you see them smelling the place with what? Physics. Please, do not beat, beat them. We are saying that because of the sickness, especially when they are in the hospital, because of the sickness, it affects what? Their development. And there are some of the form regression comes in. But as the condition improves, the child also improves, and then they are able to pick up what? Their developmental milestone. Psychological characteristics of the toddler. This is the, the troublesome stage. They want that autonomy. They want to be themselves. They want to do everything on their own. For them to have that willpower. So if they are not able to do it, they have that shame. And then you see them crying. I don't know if you've seen a child trying to put on shoe or even the slippers. What do they normally do? They put the right on the left and then the left on the right. The same way when they want to put on uh, their, their shoes and their socks, you see them struggling. They cannot do it, but they will also not allow you to do it for them. They want that autonomy. They want that willpower for them to know that, yes, I'm also able to do this. So we need to check all these things and then allow them that autonomy and then they also develop on their own. And then positive and negative emotions. This is the stage where they have the temper tantrum. You see them, everything some, they want it. Especially when you are in vehicles with them. Anything that will pass, they want to buy it. And just imagine, you don't have the money, and the child is crying, what do you do? So we need to train them right from this stage. Let them know the positive aspect and then the negative, and then we control them. We have to be firm on them, fair with them. Not that we have to beat them or restrict them unnecessarily, but we have to teach them so that they know the negative and then the positive emotion so that they will develop well because if you don't control them of these their negative emotions that is where the temper tantrum also continue to grow in the child so we need to what maintain discipline in the toddler and then that will help them build up their strong will so as you are saying they want things to be done for themselves we also need to what? Praise them when they are able to do the right thing. We should praise them. And at this stage too, Freud is saying that they are in the stage of what? Egocentrism. They are possessive. They, they, they think that their parents are the only best people in the world. So you see them saying that, my mother Sam, Anything you are having, this, my father has some, my mother has some. They have that possessive attitude. Even when they are working with their siblings, and then their parents are coming, they say, my mother is coming, my daddy is coming. Everything is about them. They look at themselves alone and no other thing. And then when they come to the schools, if you, the teacher, you said you are sick, they don't understand why you are sick. So far as they are not sick, everybody should not be sick. So there is no way that you sit down and then put your head on the table. No. One two, they will come and call you, wake up to do something. They have that egocentrism and then the, the possessive attitude. 
So by age two years, they were also engage in solitary play. Uh, play. You see them playing alone. They don't want to play with anybody. So for instance, they have the toys. They will never come and join you in playing. But you see them that whatever you're having, they will come and pick it and then play on their own. If you pick another thing, they'll come and pick it and then they'll go. But to join you in play, no. They will never do that. But as time goes on, when they get to five years, you see them now playing with you or alongside with you. So at this stage, the development of the child should be allowed as much freedom. As you are saying, we need to allow them to have that opportunity, that autonomy, so that they develop what? Their self power and uh, willpower. Let them do something on their own. But just that we have to watch them to maintain safety in their environment. And then we should force discipline in them. Very, very important. We should force discipline in them. We shouldn't allow them to be playing and then manage their own affairs. We should force discipline in them. And then the third line needs some limit. When they come, there should be a time, especially when in their house, there should be a time they should sleep. The same thing applies when they come to the hospital too. There should be what? A time that they sleep. You should set limits for everything. Other than that, you see them moving up and down. You should ensure what? That security and then autonomy in the child. Mm, as a toddler too, that separation anxiety also comes in there. Especially first time in the hospital when you are leaving them. Or even in the house when you are leaving them to work. Just you leaving them for somebody, they don't like it. That separation anxiety is also there. That caretakers have to be watchful of it. So in the hospital, normally when the parents are leaving, you know that in the evenings, the parents go and they leave the babies alone. We normally advise the mothers to leave something there. That when the child wake up, the child will see that, oh, this is for my mommy. So my mommy is around. My mommy will come. But if you don't do that, you see them crying throughout the night. And we should also let them learn good morals. Good morals is very important. Let them know wrong from right. So we are saying that we provide what? We are care to promote the child's independence and sense of what? Security, especially if it's a passive one. Independence is very necessary. At the same time, we should also what, ensure their security. As a nurse, you will need to approach them slowly. As I'm saying, the environment that they find themselves in is already threatening. So if you are forcing yourself on them, they, they start crying. So when we are approaching them, we should approach them in a soft manner, non-threatening manner so that they will agree to us. You know, when these children come to the facility, you, the nurse, they know the nurses that are good and the nurses that are not good. So they will prefer one particular nurse to take care of them. And these are the reason why they do that. Because the way we approach them, we don't approach them in the right way. So we need to approach them in the right way. Call them by their names. Call them by their names. Play with them. Greet, we, greet them when we come in. Then they'll become our friends. Anytime we are there, you see them around us. But when we don't do that, the moment we approach them, they start crying. And we work with them. Although they are children, we need to explain everything with them to ensure that nurse-patient relationship. According to Piaget, they are in the pre-operational stage. And what happens here? Time of dramatic change in cognitive 
we are looking at the cognitive aspect where they do the try and then error in their learning. So when it happens that way, they are able to tell you simple calculations. And most of the time, they cannot do abstract learning. So you see them counting their finger. When you ask them one plus one, they have to use objects to represent what? The one plus one. They know that one plus one is two. But they can, they can tell you that two is equal to one plus one. Just like the example that I've given, they can tell you that two plus two is four because they are counting their fingers. But if you have four in bulk, and then you tell them that two plus two is four, four is equal to two plus two, they cannot do that. So as I said earlier on, they are egocentric. They have that belief that Everything is about me alone, not any other person. And then, with this belief, nothing of them can change it. The belief of what? Manis to, uh, non, uh, non is to what? Mothers. But babies is of what? Human beings. They will, normally, when you are going out, mommy, buy me babies. Buy me this, buy me that, thinking that babies are being sold on the market. Then they also have this animism where they believe that inanimate objects are alive and have what? Conscience. So you see them talking to tables, beating tables here and there, as if the table is an human being. So you see them with their toys, and then they are talking to their toys. They also have transductive what? Reasoning. They have that error of inferring to causes and then effects. And the example I have here is that attributes that causes malaria. Many people in the room. So they can never do this transductive what? Reasoning that. The malaria is as a result of what? Many people in the room. They also have intuitive what? Thinking. Their parents are capable of doing everything for them. So some of them, you beat them. My mommy is a big woman. She will come and beat you. My daddy is this. My daddy will do you this. They have that intuitive thinking. Their parents or their family are there best, nothing else again. And then principle of what? Conservation. At this stage, they cannot conserve. They don't have that principle of what? Conservation. If you see a toddler, and then you are sharing mineral for them, but the bottle mineral, and then you have glass, and then you are able to measure, and then you pour the toddler on in the cup. The toddler will prefer the one in the bottle. All because the one in the bottle is more than the one in the cup. They don't have that conservation that you were able to what? Share the mineral among them equally. So he will prefer that the one in the bottle is more than that of the cap. So reversibility in the mind. At this stage, they cannot reverse any mental or physical operation. They cannot reverse any physical or mental operation. So as I said earlier on, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. But they can never tell you that 4 is equal to what? 2 plus 2. Centration. They normally concentrate at the end of what they are doing. The dimension. They don't look at what actually happens before the result. They look at the end results. So somebody going to sell and then was able to break bottles 
about 20 of them. Then somebody too who is doing or arranging the things and then able to break one bottle. If the child cannot reason like the way we, we see here, that centration, is looking at the end result. So for the one breaking the, the four bottles has done worse thing than the one breaking the one. Because we are going to store maybe food or something. And then you were able to break one bottle. Then somebody too is arranging the room. And then four bottles came down. The one who do away with the four bottles is the one at fault, not the one going to store. Meanwhile, if you look at the beginning of the scenario, somebody is going to store. But this one is arranging things in the room. The child at this stage will never look at it that way. The four is more than what? The one. Then the stasis here too. The transformation and the concentration only on the end results. Just as I'm saying, with this one, the child, when you, you pour water into a container, as, as I'm saying, the child doesn't see it that way. Looking at the containers, they cannot say that, yes, this is what I want, or this is more than the other. The, the child at this stage can direct you or can work with you to the school. But to direct you to the school, the child cannot do that. A toddler cannot tell you, oh, for my school, you have to alight at this place. Then walk to this place, and then you see the red building. The red building, behind the red building, is my school. The child cannot do that. But the child can walk with you to the place. Unlike when we come to the preschool, where the preschool can do a little bit direction to the school. So here, they work with you, but cannot direct you to the school. And then they also have this magical thinking. Anything at all can happen. Oh, so this one will happen. So you see them expecting something to happen. That is them. And then if it doesn't happen, they have that guilt. And then they blame themselves for it not happening. That is their thinking. Mommy should do this, or oh, I can do this. If the thing doesn't happen that way, then it's not them. So as caregivers, we should know them very well at this stage, and then take very good care of them. It's very important because we are the role models. You, the nurse on the world, you are also a role model. The parents are also role models. The siblings are also role models to them. And they are looking at us. So whatever we do, they also do it. So we provide them opportunity to play. But it should be a positive one. It should be a positive one. The other time I saw somebody, a child, an infant, trying to walk. Now moving steps. And then I saw somebody playing and pay with this child. The child at that stage cannot play and pay. All that you have to do that time is to just go back, then ask the child to come. So as you are going back, then you are telling the child, come, so that the child will be able to develop the working skills. But now the child cannot work, and then you are playing and play with the child. How can the child jump and then play this and play? No. So we should know their developmental age and then the play that we have to play with them so that they can imitate us well. Now their language, what is their language? How do they communicate with us? They are able to get some, uh, gain some words rapidly. So their vocabs also what increases. And most of the time, when it comes to languages, the, the girls are faster than the boys, according to Stan Talk 
95. Two years, the child has what? 250 ways. That is the avocats that they can reach. And then over 4,000 ways by the age of what? Six years. He also learns nine new ways a day when they are in this third last stage. This is how they pick their language. These developments will slow down when the child begins to or becomes sick. As I explained earlier on, when they are sick, everything what regresses. So with time, and then they recover, then they pick it up again. So play techniques also help them gain what through their participation. So you play with them. You don't allow them to play alone. You will have to play with them. Toddlers also enjoy songs with repetitive rhymes. And that is why when we go to our nurseries, you see them having these rhymes here and there. And they enjoy it because it's repeating itself and then they like it. So, you, you know, all these things, the people at the primary level, they all do some form of psychology. And all these things are in psychology. And then they learn it and then they grow. So if you are a primary teacher and then you don't know these things, it becomes difficult for you to handle the kids at the schools. Then they are saying that their memory also is developing at this stage. And it's associated with painful experiences. As I said earlier on, some of us, the parents, you see them telling the children that a auntie is bow or panier. Me, when they tell me that, I said, please tell the child that I'm not going to give injection. I'm just coming to be friend with the child. I think that, that the child will keep this experience and then the child will never want to attend to any nurse at all. The moment he or she sees a nurse, the nurse is coming to give injection, which is wrong. We have to be, we have to be honest and then firm with them. Adequate explanation of every procedure we are going to carry on them. So that they will also be part of their procedure and then they will accept it willingly. But if you don't ask, explain it to them, then you think that, oh, this one is a child. So let me do whatever I will do. The child will never allow you. And that is where we see them crying. But when the moment we explain it to them, we are honest with them. Oh, it's painful. But after the pain, I will do this, I will do that. The child will allow you and then you will inject smoothly. The child will cry though, but it's for a moment. And then the child will stop. But oh, it's not painful, it's not painful. And then you give the child injection and it's painful. That trust is no more there. So we have to be very careful when we are taking care of them. So that is that as I've given the example. And the attention span also what improves. Initially, with the with the infant, they can they can concentrate on one activity. They are here. They do this one small. They stop. They do this one small. They stop. But as a toddler, the attention span also increases. So some of them in their schools, you see them giving them assignments, and then you see them in a group. They are all on it. But with time, you see some of them jumping, crossing to one another. And that is how they are, they, are, they are at this stage. So we need to monitor them. Know the time that they are exhausted, and then we change the activity. The moment we change the activity, you see them bringing their interest. But if you keep them on one activity, no. So that is that there for you. So 24 months, they can remain at a tax for 15 to 30 minutes. Even 24 months, two years, 10 to, uh, 15 to 30 minutes. Then they, they go off, putting on their sauce. They cannot put it on. You see them crying. Their dresses, some of them, when they are doing the, bat the battering of the shirt, one will be longer than the other. And they are okay with it. And that is how they develop. Let's look at the nursing consideration when we are taking care of them. What is being expected of us as nurses and then as caretakers? What do we do? 
You know now they have that autonomy. So we need to negotiate with them. How do they want to take their medication? Do they want to swallow? Do they want to take the water first before taking the medication? If yes, you do it according to that. I've told you earlier on, we need to explain procedures to them. And when we explain it to them, they will cooperate with us. So as you've explained it to the child, the child has accepted, I want to take it. So now, how do you want to take it? Do you want to take it in the cup? Do you want to use the spoon? All this thing comes in. When you are going to take it, do you want to chew it? Or you want to swallow? You need to find out from the child. And then the child will be able to take the medication for you smoothly. They also prefer to sit or whatever form they want to take it. You agree with them and then you give it to them. Other than that, you see the negative aspects of them. And then during medication time, allow them time to sit on the chair or on the laps. Avoid the strain. As I told you earlier, restraining is very, very serious. You restrain them and then they may aspirate and bring about aspiration pneumonia, which can later kill them. So we don't have to force or restrain them. And as they can resist drugs by not swallowing, we have to be very careful, especially with those with the sour taste and then the mischief that they don't like. We can also mix it with some food that they are coming to eat, and then we give it to them. So just assess the child, know what the child wants, and then quickly you do that one for the child. And then avoid uh, associating essential food with medication. So come and eat this food and then I'll give you your medication. No. Other than that, we are not being fair to them. We are not honest to them. So we have to be consistent with what we are doing and then be honest with them. Bad taste will last for some time. So you just tell the child, it's painful. But with time, it will go. Oh, this one takes sour. But later, you feel some sweet behind it. With time, it will go. But don't tell the child it's, it's sweet. It's sweet. Then the child will taste it, and then it's not the sweetness that the child wants. So we need to watch out these things. They are also easily distracted. Some of them, you are playing with them, and then they get up. They want to, or something happens now, they tend to, to what is going on. So the same way, when you are coming to give them injection, and then you are giving them the injection in, in an open space, something comes in, and then they just turn. And then by the time you realize you're giving the, you push the drug into the uh, uh, fatty tissues instead of the muscle, which will bring about what? Injection abscess. So we need to watch these things. So we normally use the, the lateral aspect of the tie instead of the bottles so that we avoid damaging the nerves to uh, bring about any injury in the leg. They are nutrition. At this stage too, the toddler year is very important. Nutrition is very important in the life of the child. They are eating habits is good so now we need to teach them and then know the source of food that is good for them we don't have to use food as a source of punishment or reward some of them when the toddlers do something wrong because of what you've done i won't give you food oh this one oh come and take food no we don't have to do that they need the food they need good nutrition so we shouldn't associate these things to punishment and then reward. We should be very careful when we are doing that. And then we also have the amounts that they are supposed to gain each day. The nutrients that they need to improve on their weights each day. Snacks are also important. Non-nutritious fats, we should avoid them. And then their stomach capacity also increases. So we need to also increase their food for them. The GIT2 is now well matured and they can take in any food. And then they, they need to be fed three times daily with the snacks, good water, 
and then fruits and vegetables, all very necessary in the child. Their tastes is not well refined, but yes, so they know what is best for them. Some of them, when they fall sick, because of their sickness, they don't have appetite for food. But we need to reassure them that a normal pattern or the developmental mass to return to eat normal and then the child will be able to eat and then eat well. Autonomy is there and normally by 15 months can drink from cups so we should also encourage them to do that as they are feeding. We, should, <laughs> we shouldn't expect anything like neatness where we put the food down, we are expecting them to eat everything from the plate nicely. No, some of them mess themselves with the food. And we need to clean. We should observe their routine, their rituals that they do when they are coming to eat, whatever they do. We should observe it, and then we do that for them. That is why you need to find out from the parents or the mother, especially when they are on the ward, what they normally do for them. And then we do that for them children. We shouldn't force them, we shouldn't stress them when they are feeding and we should use the cup and spoon in feeding them. Let's look at their safety measures. How do you ensure safety in this toddlers? Very, very troublesome. About 50% of pediatric cases are in this age group, one to three years. Because of their activities, they easily get into accidents and they are prone to most of the home accidents. And the commonest one is bends, all because they want to reach an object which is very hot, especially our tea, our soup, our oil that we are using to fry our food. So please, we need to be very careful with the toddler at this stage because of their walking, they are running, jumping here and there. We need to watch it so that they may not come into any home accidents or they will be aware of their environment. And as I said earlier on, the common injuries are false and then bends. These are the common injuries that you can see in the third lap. Poisonings too is common, but it's not common as in bends. Once in a while, you see a child drinking kerosene or parazine, or because they cannot tell the difference in the taste. And especially because we put them in these four thick bottles, so they think it's water. So the moment they take it, they will take a lot before they realize that the taste is not as that of what water. Good. Let's look at the preschool period. This stage is 10 from 3 to 6 years and this is where they are now going to the class 1. So here they are in the KG1 and then KG2 going to class 1. So this starts from 3 to 6 years. Physical characteristics. How do we see their growth physically? They become stable during this preschool stage, but continue to increase at a faster rate than that of their middle childhood. That's the six to 11 years. However, their strength and motor skills also increases. Weight with the preschool child is 2.3 kg per year. And this doubles the, the Weight doubles by age four to five years. So you could see the increase in the weight of the child and then the height. As we learned earlier on, if it's a boy, two years, you double, you get the adult height. If it's a girl, 18 months, it doubles and then you get the adult height. So although the height and the weight are increasing, it's not as rapid as the earlier stages. They are sleeping pattern. By this age, the child's sleep pattern is well established. And it's where fear of darkness and then ghosts and then the monsters
comes in. They continue with the nightmares that they normally have during their toddler stage. So as caregivers, we should know the toys that we give to them. Moving objects on the world should be avoided. And then in their rooms, when they have these toys hanging here and there, we should remove them because it scares them when they are sleeping. Their elimination pattern. They are able to empty the bowels and the bladder. They should have the control over it now because by a three years, they should be able to control the bladder and then they have the toilet train. Four or five years, they should stop passing urine in bed. They should be able to control themselves. They should be able to wake up and then pass urine. Now, if sickness sets in, this regresses and then you need to monitor the child. So that is what I said. When they are sick, they have to be slow again before they recap or recatch it again. And then we call this as the catch up stage. Where they are sick, they regresses, and then later on they pick it up again. And we call it what? The catch up stage. Let's look at their psychosocial domain. Psychosocial domain. What happens there? Initiative versus guilt. Learning what he can do for himself. They have that initiative. I will do this. But if they don't get it, that is where I'm mm, ye. So you need to look at the child. What are the things that the child wants to do for himself? Then you, you direct and then you teach the child. And then just all that you have to do is to guide the child within the physical environment. Let the child know what he or she is about. And then just be there to maintain what? Safety in the child. All this one, explaining procedure to them is also necessary. As a nurse, you should know how to talk to them, their siblings, and then their friends. In the hospital, too, as a part of their initiative, they might like dresses and then care for themselves, which is not necessary on the world. But you need to allow them, because as nurses, we are always in hurry to carry out with our procedures. But these babies, too, will be there, and I want to do it for myself, like they are wasting your time. But please allow them. Let them exhibit that initiative, and then you also direct them has to do it. And when, when you are doing that, it's all part of the recovery of the child. And that will tell you that, yes, the child is now gaining his or her what? Developmental milestone. So they also enjoy this repetition of rhymes and they continue like that. But it's not as much as that of the toddler. They carry out activities above and beyond their abilities. But yes, so they feel guilt and then they continue. They build the Lego they cannot build. They cry small, they start again. And that is, and then some of them too, they try to learn rules of the game. You know, initially they like the, the, the solitary play where they play alone, then they come to the para. Now, they know games with rules, especially when they are playing Ludo. You see them, they don't know anything. When you place it before you come out, they know it. There are certain games that there are rules, and then they are able to obey it. And then they know their limits, and then how they behave. Cognitively, we are saying that they are opposite that of the toddler. Most of them are opposite that of the toddler. We have to explain things to them for us to gain their cooperation. Very, very necessary. Very, very necessary. We have to explain things. And we have to be honest with their answers. And then answer them appropriately. We should demonstrate things for them, especially when you are coming to do something for them. You need to demonstrate it for them. If, for instance, you are coming to check the temperature of the child, let the child, uh, the child hold the uh, thermometer. Let the child himself put it under the, the azilla or 
the man so that the child will know that it's not anything that will harm him or her. And then the child will cooperate. But if we don't do that, then you see the child crying. Then in the moment you approach the child to put the thermometer there, you see the child moving away. And if you're not careful, the child will even raise their hand and then the thermometer will fall down. So we need to what? Explain and then be honest with the child and demonstrate it for them to see. Then also their favorite word at this stage is why. They want to know why and then questioning you here and there. So some of the, the parents, especially with the, with the fathers, they don't want to engage with, with this stage of their development when they are getting to the six years. All the time, mommy, why is it this one like that? Why is it this one like that? Especially when you are pregnant. They want to know why the baby is there and how the baby is going to come out. So they keep on asking you questions. And then as, as a caretaker, you should be tactful. Know how to answer this child. And if you don't do that too, they continue like that. They go to their schools and then they find out from their friends. And if you don't give them a good answer, they will pick whatever their friends will tell them. So that is the, the, the mannerism that they have. Why is this one like that? Why is this like that? So you need to explain to them. So these are some of the concrete things. They have that concrete. All the things that we did in the toddler is opposite that of the uh, school, uh, preschool. So... I won't waste much time on it, the concentration and then the rest. So now let's look at their language and speech. Everything is increasing and they have 900 words at the age of three years, 2,000 by five years. And then they may what, slatter and then hesitate when speaking. But advise care to kind of to ignore them. Some of them they speak hurriedly. So they hesitate in their speak, but we, we should be careful with them. They are able to also follow commands, as I'm saying, they follow rules. So whatever you tell them, sit down here. I don't want you to go out. They will sit down. So please. We should exercise patience with them when we are issuing this command to them. But especially when we are giving them these commands, we should be very careful in the sense that, for instance, you are sending this child to go and take water for you from the fridge. Then you said, Kofi, when you go and take water from the fridge, when you are coming, take the bucket from the floor there and then clean the floor, do this. They cannot do all these things at a time. All that they know is, go and pick water for me. Let Kofi bring the water. After that, oh, okay, Kofi, the bucket is there. Go and pick it for me. It's all a form of what? Assessing the development of the child. But if you give all the command in one, they become confused. And then they will forget some. And then most of the time, when they come back, we, the parents, we get annoyed. And then we start shouting at them. But it's our fault. Giving them all that instruction, even you adults. And then you are in the class, this one is saying this, this one is saying, won't you shout them down that, keep quiet and let one person talk? It's the same thing. Just imagine at this stage, you are giving about four or five commands. Go and do this, go and do that, go and do this. They will forget. So please, we should give them one at a time. Now let's look at their nursing consideration. What do we do when we are nursing this baby? Now there are big men enough and big women. So we should know what to do to them, especially when it comes to their medication. They can tell you, I won't take the medication. You can't force them. You know, patient rights. But we should know how to do. Because at this stage, they think when you prick them, then the amount of blood that will come out of them, they cannot bear it. So you need to explain to them that blood will come through, but it's just a little. 
and then they will allow you to inject them nicely. And if you don't do that, the moment you go, then they turn this off. You pass and they turn this way, which is wrong. If you don't take care, you cause abscess in the child. So we need to what? Explain it to them for them to follow. And they know what they want. And they can also take their drug perfectly when we are able to explain to them. And then they normally prefer the tablets to be chewed than swallowing. So we encourage them. And when you are giving them the injection, please let them be focused. Let them be aware. And then you know what to do. So their nutrition also from, from the toddler to the preschool, they also need the calories to grow. So their food should be well worth, nutritious. And then you should give them food of their preference. Don't just go and dump anything for them. Give them food of their preference. Other than that, they will not take the food. Let's look at their safety measures. How best can we maintain safety in this stage of the development? We say with this stage, they are well worth coordinated and less accident prone than the toddlers. So with this stage of the development, they themselves they are afraid. So they don't want any parts of their body to be injured. So they are very careful. And then the rate at which we see accidents in the toddlers is less in the preschool. Let's take the school age, we are done with the preschool. Now we are at the school age. That is the six years to the 11 years. Here, everything is formed. The child is now steady, growth is steady, and then even they progress in physical and then what? Emotional growth. And this is a stage to where they start to compete with each other. They start to compete with each other. Their height too is increases from 2.5 to 5 centimeters per year. And then the weight, 2.7 per year. And then this keep on changing. And then you see the changes in what? The body proportion and that of what? The fat deposition on the body. Three things. At this stage, the child tries to lose some of their what? The serious what? Teeth. So we are saying that five to six months, we see the teeth coming out, and then six to 11 years. 